Hello and welcome to Dialogue. The relationship between Canada and India has arguably reached its lowest point after both sides kicked senior diplomats out of their countries. Canada has accused India of being involved in the killing of a Sikh community leader, whom India has designated as a separatist and terrorist. India has denied the allegations. How did the relationship reach this low point? Will Canada's Five Eye allies side with Canada against India? Will such an incident impact India's ties with the West? To discuss these issues and more, I'm happy to be joined by Benoit Hardy Chuan, adjunct professor of political science and international affairs of Temple University in Japan, Professor Madhav Nalapat, vice chairman of the Manipur Advanced Research Group, and Peter Kuznick, professor of history of the American University. That's our topic. I'm Xu Qingdu. Welcome to Dialogue. Uh, Benoit, I will start with you. You are based in Japan. You are Canadian. Uh, so Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said that you know, Ottawa was pursuing, quote, credible allegations uh, from a Canadian intelligence that New Delhi played a role in assassination of a promised prominent Sikh leader in Canada, Hardeep Singh Nija, on Canadian soil uh, about three months ago. So tell us, you know, who is Hardeep uh, Singh Nija you know, from the eyes of the uh, Canadian public? Uh, is he a normal Sikh leader or, as alleged, a, a Khalistani terrorist? Well, um, he was born in India, but has been living in Canada for 25 years now. And he is part of a very large Sikh community in Canada. Canada has the largest Sikh community outside of India. More than 700,000 uh, Canadians are followers of the Sikh religion, and many of them are from India. So it's a very significant uh, community. Um, Mr. Nijar was also uh, in Canada very involved uh, politically. He was a leader of the Sikh community and had also organized a non-binding referendum in Canada on the separation of, uh, of, of this province of India. So for that reason, because he was a prominent activist, he was an independentist, he was uh, perceived by the Indian government as a dangerous activist, somebody who acted against the interest of the Indian state. Mm -hmm. Uh, Professor Nalapat, uh, so, uh, you know, that obviously he's someone uh, Indian government has a problem with, um, uh, but the uh, Indian side has denied any involvement uh, in the assassination of Mr. Nija. Uh, so what's the response, you know, from India, uh, you know, about that allegation? Well, quite frankly, either intentionally or otherwise, Prime Minister Trudeau has uttered what I would call a barefaced lie. The reality is that there are now gangs operating in Canada. And we have seen this in India. I saw this in the Punjab in the 1980s when I used to go there repeatedly. And where people like Mr. Nijar used to send money from Canada, from the United States, from the United Kingdom to fund violent activities in Punjab. I've seen it in Kashmir when I used to travel there in the 1990s when the same situation took place. And eventually, people in these violent gangs, they devour each other. They fight each other. It's so, sometimes over money, sometimes over ter territory. They fight and devour each other. Yesterday, another uh, one of these individuals uh, was, was, was murdered. A few days ago, somebody else. I don't know if Justin Trudeau is now going to stand up in parliament. And so, yes, India did this as well. India did that as well. The fact is, it's utter nonsense. Justin Trudeau has basically failed to understand the danger he has unleashed on Canada by allowing extremism and radicalism to proliferate in Canada. The same mistake was made by Britain. The same mistake was made by United States. Oh, after all, they're only talking about going and attacking India. What do we care? Let them do what they like. And then you had violent acts in Britain, violent acts in the United States, and now you've got violent acts in Canada. But frankly, this takes the cake. The Prime Minister of Canada, without a shred of evidence, is now uttering a gross, libellious insult against the world's biggest democracy. And I'd like to say, I just wonder 
I mean, who motivated Justin Trudeau into this kind of a ridiculous action? Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Peter Kuznick, you know, here is, uh, of course, about the credibility of the information or of the evidence. Uh, right now, it's uh, from the intelligence community. It's uh, not, uh, say, from the police department. Um, so how credible, uh, let's say, uh, is the information of the involvement of the Indian government there? We have no idea if the information is credible. Uh, Trudeau has not released any evidence. Uh, he says he has the evidence. Canada has begun an inquiry. Uh, he says that he shared the evidence with the other members of the Five Eyes. So uh, Australia, New Zealand, the US and the United Kingdom. But we haven't seen any evidence yet. So it's hard to know. I can't imagine that Trudeau has stuck his neck out and taken such an aggressive step without having some pretty solid evidence, but we can't know. Governments uh, have often gotten these things wrong in the past, and it's possible that this could be wrong again. But again, we wait to see the evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Wai, you know, after the statements by the Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, and then Canada expelled an Indian diplomat, uh, so obviously there's an, a, a, let's say, escalation uh, in terms of this diplomatic relationship. Uh, so it seems like there's some credible evidence, probably, at least uh, in the hands of uh, the Canadian government. You know? Otherwise, people would ask, you know, why has the incident you know, escalated into a diplomatic clash so quickly? Right. Well, I'm going, I'm going to echo the sentiment of my colleague just before me, given that over the last year, and we've seen it also in the Canadian uh, Indo-Pacific strategy of last November, uh, India was, uh, was seen and is still seen as an important partner for Canada, uh, as one of the main objectives for Canada to reinforce its uh, presence uh, in the region. Canada is an important partner. Um, it has been, Justin Trudeau has been very keen to reinforce relations with Delhi for years, which is why uh, just like my colleague just said, um, it would be surprising uh, that he would make sort of these kinds of accusations without having the evidence. Now, obviously, just as he said, we none of us have seen the evidence. We cannot uh, pose any judgments. Mistakes have been made, obviously, uh, in the past. Uh, but this is obviously very serious. Um, these kinds of accusations usually lead to diplomatic uh, consequences, and this is what we are seeing at the moment. Uh, as you said, with the expel uh, with the two diplomats on both sides being expelled, which which is um, a bad sign, obviously. But this is on, this is on par for the course when you have uh, diplomatic uh, crisis, a crisis between two countries. It often leads to such uh, expelling of uh, diplomats. So a very uh, concerning situation, no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, very concerning situation. Peter, tell us more about, uh, you know, Probably there's uh, more than the recent uh, or three months ago, the killing of Mr. Nija. Uh, you know, there's a Sikh problem here in India. And if you look at the um, you know, arguments from both sides, you, you kind of understanding their position. For Canada, I mean, it's easy to understand, you know, any killing of Canadian citizen in the Can Canadian soil is a serious concern about their sovereignty. And for Indian side, it's also understandable, you know, if there are a separatist movement and a terrorist uh, violent people and they are on the list of the most wanted and uh, somehow they would see like in, in Canada is uh, harboring them and supporting them, of course, they would not be happy. Yes, for uh, Trudeau to stick his neck out like this and to do so at a time when under Biden's leadership, the NATO, Western countries, Europeans, United States, Canada have been embracing Modi, embracing India, and seeing India as part of, hopefully, aspirationally, part of this coalition against China with the Quad, uh, with other recent developments. They've been doing everything they can to elevate Modi's leadership on the world stage. And you look at the timing of this. Uh, India has now surpassed China as the world's largest country in the world population-wise. India's moon landing recently. India's hosting the G20 summit. This was Modi's moment on the world stage. So for Trudeau to now raise these kinds of charges goes against what 
his allies are trying to accomplish right now. So it's very serious. We've seen, you know, Mohammed bin Salman's reputation has been very sullied by the uh, the, the um, Saudi involvement in the murder in the United States. Putin uh, has been accused of being of killing his opponents. It's mostly gone on inside of Russia, but these kinds of allegations are very serious and they have repercussions. This one has enormous repercussions because of the geopolitical implications of this. If this is, but, and then the question is, how are Trudeau's allies going to respond? So far, the response has been quite muted and Canada is pretty upset from what we hear with the lack of support that it's getting. Some lip service, but very, very minimal in terms of concrete actions. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a serious moment in terms of U.S. policy and Canadian policy globally right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll come back to that point, obviously very serious and important in terms of uh, you know, relationship and also uh, geopolitical uh, competition there. Uh, Professor Nalapad, you know, uh, th there are accusations not only against uh, Canada, but also the UK, the US and Australia of being passive about separatist movements in their countries, you know, about the Sikh uh, communities there. Uh, do you think the, the, these governments are aware of the problem, you know? I mean, Sikh people, uh, immigrants into their own country and then they become their own citizens. Uh, there's no problem inside that country, but uh, for India, uh, you know, sometimes you do see problems with the support, with uh, uh, this uh, obviously you know, protection in a sense uh, by those governments. Well, Chundu, first of all, I'd like to say that I don't believe this is a crisis at all. I think this is a tantrum by Justin Trudeau, some kind of a gimmick possibly to boost his popularity. The man uh, is, I mean, he's playing to some political game and frankly, he's dependent on some of these radical elements to, to remain prime minister because of a wafer thin majority. So the fact is relationships between democracies are not simply relationships between two governments, the relationship between two peoples. And as far as that is concerned, there's a very strong relationship. Secondly, the Sikh community is one of the most patriotic and noble communities in India. I have gone to Punjab multiple times. I go to Punjab multiple times. And I can assure you the situation there is very peaceful, which must be very, very frustrating for those who would like to create a, a 1980s Punjab. I've gone to a 1980s Punjab. It was hell on earth. And it was hell on earth because a lot of money and other things were coming from some countries. I'm happy to say the United States, Australia, the UK, all of them have acted very, very properly. Why? Because they know that these people are up to violence. They're up to terror. But one country has not. And that is Justin Trudeau's Canada. I don't know whether it's because Mr. Trudeau is, I mean, you know, I don't know, too liberal or too woke or whatever, and he doesn't believe that these kind of people should be checked. But the reality is Canada has done nothing to, to ensure that these people are brought to justice. These mm. are people who have been openly proclaiming that they will kill Indian diplomats in Canada. They're openly uh, proclaiming a bounty for killing Indian politicians in India. All this is happening in plain sight of Justin Trudeau. And I would like to say, on the basis of limited information I have, the Canadian security services have ample information on email about the financial trails of some of the citizens of Canada and violent activities by some groups in India. They have email trails, they have money trails, they have telephone trails, and they're doing nothing about it. Why? because Justin Trudeau depends on these people to remain in power in the Canadian Parliament. So we're, I'm sorry to say this man is an outlier. Luckily, the rest, I mean, the United States, Biden, for example, very supportive of India, Australia, Albanese, Tokyo. I mean, one of our friends is in Tokyo. We are going to have a quad meeting uh, at the Republic Day function. I'm told all the quad members are being invited and President Biden will also be there. In the, uh, in the Republic Day. We have, and I, and I quite agree, we are all strong security partners. India and the Western world 
are very close to each other. And I can tell you, it will take more than, I'm sorry to use this word, but I'm in a democratic country, and I can say that a more than a clown like Justin Trudeau with his absurd lies to break up that alliance for the benefit of those who are interested in seeing the West and India fight each other and be enemies of each other rather than work together. Mm -hmm. Well, Branwa, in response to Professor Nalapad, uh, do you think the, uh, you know, uh, the Trudeau government uh, is aware of uh, the concerns, especially the security concern from New Delhi? And, uh, uh, and also, is this decision you know, to make a, a big deal about the incident now uh, out of a political consideration, you know, about the vote bank with the Sikh people? Well, of course, the Canadian government and Prime Minister Trudeau is well aware of these concerns. Uh, these concerns have been aired publicly, have been expressed very loudly for decades now. Um, in my numerous trips to India as well, my Indian counterparts have often mentioned these. I was in India just earlier this year, and in numerous meetings with Indians, uh, whenever the topic of Canada came up, uh, these concerns were expressed. So yes, uh, Justin Trudeau and his government is well aware of the these concerns, no doubt. Um, I'm not going to comment on electoral considerations because I don't. This is outside of my field of expertise. I deal with geopolitics rather than domestic politics. But when it comes to the security and political relations between uh, India, um, no doubt that these, again, these concerns were well known to everyone. Uh, but despite this, yeah, the Canadian government and also the Indian government were keen over the last few years to reinforce uh, relations for geopolitical and other reasons. Uh, but of course, this current uh, affair, this current tri crisis is going to uh, dampen uh, the prospects of um, cooperation, at least for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Peter, earlier you mentioned about this uh, serious repercussions, uh, I mean, possible uh, if uh, there's investigation and if the investigation was uh, made public, uh, for example, it proves to be true with allegation. Uh, you know, some people, some media has already made uh, that judgment that it, that will put India along with countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia. I mean, what kind of implications that will have in terms of a relationship here? It's going to erode the progress that's made in, in terms of the growing closer relationship between the West and India. Uh, even Canada, you look at Canada, India is Canada's 10th biggest trading partner. That's been increasing, as we're going to probably talk about. Uh, Canada has 300. Uh, 20,000 Indian students in Canada, that number jumped 47% in 2022 alone. We see growing uh, ties between India and Canada, but between India and the West. And it comes at a crucial juncture because India plays a unique role. India has relations with both sides. India has maintained neutrality, not only during the Cold War, but since the Cold War. And India has close relations with Russia. Uh, almost 80 to 85 percent of India's arms come from Russia. India is getting cheap oil and gas from Russia. And so the United States sees wooing India as crucial to its Indo-Pacific strategy. Canada has been part of that also, as have uh, the other members of the Five Eyes. Uh, and they're conducting their own trade relations with India right now on trade negotiations. So this is a, in some ways, it's baffling that Trudeau has made such a public incident out of it, weighing national considerations over against global considerations right now. Uh, and that's why I say he better have some very good evidence um, in order to make this case, uh, because his allies and close partners are not eager to go there and are very hesitant to publicly support him on this, although they have been paying lip service to the need for more investigations and more scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Well, Benoit, there's a report that the U.S. side is working with Canada closely to identify, you know, the assailants to do the investigation. You know, what kind of result do you expect? Well, naturally, Canada and the United States have an extremely close intelligence cooperation. Uh, they have extensive ties that go back uh, 
we're talking about decades, obviously, not only as members of the Five Eyes, but also simply as two uh, NATO members and two, um, two obviously, the biggest countries in, in, uh, in North America. So from the beginning, uh, the Canadian government reports have come out that they asked uh, American cooperation on identifying, on helping them uh, with this investigation. Um, and we're obviously not aware of what uh, the United States has been able to reveal on this. This is all classified intelligence, uh, but it, given the the you know the the extensive exchanges when it comes to intelligence between the two countries, I wouldn't be surprised that the Americans um, are able, if they do have uh, any kind of intelligence on this, are going to be sharing that, of course, with their Canadian uh, counterparts. As far as the results of such an investigation, we will not know for months because we're still at the very beginning stage of this. Uh, but um, yeah, obviously, the intelligence ties between the two countries are as close as you will see between any other two countries in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Nalapat, uh, you know, do you think India government is, uh, is in any way you know, concerned of uh, the investigation or you know, investigation, if there's one, with evidence that will be published uh, publicly? Look, first of all, uh, regarding, for example, Saudi Arabia and Russia, India, we had a resolution in the G20 unanimously agreed where Russia was not named. The United States signed on to it. Canada signed on to it. Japan signed on to it. I mean, uh, accepting uh, Canada under Trudeau. And I'd like to add Canada under Trudeau. Canada is a good friend. Trudeau is not. Mohammed bin Salman. Mohammed bin Salman and, Prime, and President Biden shook hands warmly. And Prime Minister Modi was there, you know, holding the hands of both Mohammed bin Salman and President Biden. So we, I'm, I'm happy that you put India together with our old and good friend Russia and with our very good friend uh, Saudi Arabia, our, our traditional friend. I'm very happy I put India with these two countries. And I'd like to add that it's now three months since this happened. And do you think Joe Biden would have welcomed Prime Minister Modi to the White House? Do you think Joe Biden is going to come to India for the Republic Day? The Quad members are going to come? If there was a shred of evidence that India had done this kind of thing, the fact is these people are dime a dozen in Canada. They're all over Canada and they're killing each other in Canada. They are dying. I mean, almost every month now, you have one or two deaths of these gangland people. I don't know why Justin Trudeau has gone and done this. He's up the stakes fantastically by going to parliament and making an allegation. And today, do you know something? Hindu students feel unsafe in Canada. The Hindu community feels unsafe in Canada. They are under attack and advisories have gone out. Please be careful because you might be attacked, uh, attacked on the ground of your faith, attacked on the ground of the country you come from. And this is happening in a country where, unfortunately, because of the misgovernment of Justin Trudeau, you've got gangs, you've got drugs, you've got all kinds of horrible activities taking place there. And he'd like to find a scapegoat. And what scapegoat has he found? The country that is the linchpin of the alliance for a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. So if Justin Trudeau wants to do, try and do more harm to the Western alliance and to a free, open Indo-Pacific, he's welcome to try. It's kind of like a, somehow it seems like there's a balance to make probably for Canada. On one hand, it's about the national sovereignty. You don't want to see things like this to happen in your own soil. You know, it's about your sovereignty. And then, of course, there's an important role to be played by, I mean, played by, by India in terms of the alliance, in terms of importance attached to India by Washington, by, you know, Australia, UK, et cetera. Do you think there's a tight no, rope somehow for the Tudor government to, to walk there? It is a very difficult tightrope for Canada, and not only for Canada, but also for its allies, uh, its partners around the world. Because, as I mentioned in one of my first comments at the beginning of the program, uh, for Canada and for Justin Trudeau himself, he has constantly, since first uh, being elected um, now a few years ago, it's been, he's been in power for close to 10 years now, he's always consistently, consistently uh, portrayed India as an, partner, as an important partner for Canada. As I mentioned earlier, Canada, uh, India rather, is prominently featured in the Canadian Indo-Pacific strategy. So the idea that Justin Trudeau 
would simply suddenly lie to derail relations with India uh, or listen to liars. I don't necessarily buy that issue there. I don't buy that because Justin Trudeau has always, like I said, personally, even on his several visits to India, uh, reiterated how important India was there. And also, as Peter said earlier, this is the kind of situation where you don't stick your neck out unless you have some unless you've been presented with intelligence that you consider credible again i don't know we don't know none of us know about this intelligence here we if one day this intelligence is produced publicly we might have a better idea but simply the fact of the matter remains that it's too important india is too important partner for canada and for trudeau to do something like this without having some kind or having been told some kind of evidence uh, that is credible. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, how is the likelihood that you know, Washington and allies probably will somehow overlook the issue uh, because of the importance of the relationship with India? Uh, you know, geopolitical considerations somehow will outdo uh, this sovereignty concern of, uh, of Canada? I think Washington is hoping that this whole thing goes away as quickly as possible. Uh, Professor Nalapat mentioned the statement that came out of the G20 meeting. The fact that the United States was willing to accept the statement and sign off on it, that doesn't mention Russia. That downplays the Ukrainian crisis uh, is a sign that Biden was doing everything he could to make that summit succeed because he wanted to elevate Modi's stature in the world. So the United States is not happy about this. This could potentially undermine, well, it's got two things. One is either Biden's credibility about human rights, sovereignty, sovereignty uh, and democracy are just words, uh, or he's got to support Canada on this if they come up with credible evidence. But he doesn't want that to be the case, really. Uh, and we see that the British are maintaining their trade negotiations with India. It hasn't stopped them at all. The Aussies, I mean, they all want this to go away, but Trudeau is insisting that this not go away. He has, however, somewhat moderated his initial statements. So he also has, sort of soft pedal this a little bit after the initial reaction, um, partly because he did not get the support. This has been going on behind the scenes for months now. And we know that at the G20 meeting, uh, Modi refused a one-on-one -on -one formal meeting with Trudeau there. Uh, so th there's a lot of tension behind the scenes and a lot of diplomacy behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And we wait to see what Canada comes up with and what kind of evidence, and then how the rest yes. of the world's going to react. We don't know. Yes. Well, with that, we come to the end of today's show. Many thanks to our guests. You can also find us on the CGT app on YouTube. Thank you for being with us. I'm Xu Qingdu. See you next time. <laughs>